G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. What have I got on the bench today? Well, it is the Argonaut 370 Hexacopter from RC Timer. Now, this is, I think they did release one a while ago, if I'm remembering correctly, which had sort of custom ESCs and things, but this is a kind of more conventional setup. It's got regular ESCs and uh, they've sent this to me to review, so I'm going to review it. And a lot of people have said, hey, why don't you review a hexacopter? So, hey, look, I'm reviewing a hexacopter. What a wonderful coincidence. So let's take a look at this thing, and I'll give you my initial thoughts on this part. We'll do a flight test in part two of this video. But first of all, let's look at it on the bench. And what do you get for your money? Well, here it is. I mean, it's to give you an idea of the size. There's my hand. I've probably got another quad around here somewhere. Who to think it? I can't find a quad. Oh, damn. Hang on. Where are they all gone? Oh. Must have given most of them away. <laughs> Can't find another quad. That's ridiculous. This is Quad City. It's Quad Central. Where have the quads gone? Um, oh man, that's terrible. Hang on. I'm wandering away with my new microphone, which doesn't get the fuzzies. And no, what have I done? Oh, don't even know where the blackout's gone. There's my. Oh, here it is. It's on the floor. Everything is on the floor. And I excuse me for the long sort of pause and stuff happening on the screen. But here you go, here is the blackout to give you an idea of size, to give you a comparison. So it's a 370 and the blackout's about a 230, I think. So that'll give you a comparison perhaps. Um, but you'll notice that this hexacopter, I haven't got the arms extended. It comes like this. This is straight out of the box. This is a plug and fly, basically. You can put your own receiver in. And as I've said, I'm looking at the, at the moment at stuff you can get in the air really quickly with none of this sort of having to build it from scratch because a lot of people have said we really want to get flying racing these damn things but we don't want to be bothered building them that's why i did the walk hero review so here we go as it comes like this there's only one bolt holding the arms and so you can just swivel the arms out to the correct position if i can find where it is yep there we go and same here and then that gives you an idea of what it's going to look like if i can get it all in the shot because i can't so that's what it looks like when it's all sort of, you know, arms are in the right place. Brilliant. There you go. So to get it flying, you've got to put in six times two bolts. That's 12 bolts. The other bolts, are, no, you don't actually, because these back ones are all fully bolted. So four times two bolts, eight bolts go in to hold the arms in place. Piece of cake. Um, and the rest of it's pretty straightforward. There is a little bag of goodies that come with it. There's the bag of goodies. Has a plate for your camera with some little rubber bobbins, as is usual. Uh, it's got some leads for the flight controller so you can plug your receiver in. It's got some props. Um, at this stage, only six props. Why? I mean, it's not like you're never going to break one, is it? So I'd say RC timer. Um, Realise that people are going to crash this thing. It's part of the, you know, part of the way you fly them is to crash them. If you're not crashing them, you're not trying hard enough. So throw in two sets of props, not just one. Come on, don't be mean. They're not very expensive props. Um, it's got some nuts and bolts and bits and pieces in there. So yeah. Um, it's even got, this one's got some spare spaces because spaces do get bent, some cable ties. So yeah, it looks like it's just about everything you need to get this quad going, apart from your receiver and your transmitter and your FPV glasses or screen. Because it has on board a camera, see there, Ta da little camera, a board camera. Um, it's supposedly it's a CCD, it looks pretty budget, but hey, you know, you can't tell necessarily by looking, but we'll be checking that out. And it has the 200 milliwatt low cost video transmitter which I've reviewed and they actually work pretty damn well. I'm quite impressed with these but one thing I'm not so impressed with is it's simply held in place with a piece of double-sided sponge rubber and that means it can come out like that. See? That's, no, it's not, not good enough. And maybe you put a cable tie over there. I don't know. We'll have a look at that when I go through a little bit of the build in the next part of the video. So there you go. Push it down. It's stuck for the time being. Comes with an antenna. No mention of whether that's left or right-hand polarised and it's important to know because if you use the, the you know, one polarization on your video transmitter and another on your goggles, you're not going to get very good results. So they should label whether this is left or right. Another thing is there is no documentation. I couldn't, there was nothing came in the box and I went onto the website, can find no instructions or manual or anything for this. So you're on your own a bit. So in that respect, I might do a little bit of a build on it, just showing you what you need to do to get it flying when you take it out of the box. Right, let's have a look at the component parts and see how they stack up. The motors are the uh, RC timer 2206 2000 kV, probably not going to focus on that because it's too close, but um, yeah, that, there should be plenty of grunt in those. I haven't tested these yet, but I will test them. The speed controllers are the Opto 30 amp, so you can, in theory, six cell, up to six cells, because these will handle up to six cells, the 30 amp ones. And so you've got quite a bit of current carrying capability there. I gather, talking to people, that the earlier version with the sort of 
ESCs that slotted onto the board did have some smoke issues. You know, the magic smoke would come out occasionally. So these, hopefully, these are equivalent to the DYS 30s, I think, um, or SN30 or whatever. So um, I know the 20 amp versions of these seem to work pretty damn well. We'll find out how the 30 amp ones go when we test this out. Um, the flight controller, uh, yeah, it's got a CC3D. Now, uh, I've used CC3D before. I had a QAV with CC3D in it. And that, that QAV flew wonderfully. It was a really nice flying quad. Once I threw the CC3D out and put in a nose board, I'm not impressed with CC3D. Certainly not with the OpenPilot software. It's, it's more cumbersome to set up. And it did silly things like if you're flying along and you bump the ground, it would like peg all the gyros and accelerometers. So then it would just fly like a limp noodle until you landed it and power cycled it. So maybe they've fixed that. Maybe base flight will fix that. Oh, sorry, clean flight will fix that. So I will... Try it out with the OpenPilot because apparently this board has been tuned for the hex. I'll try it out, give it a fair, fair suck of the save, see how it goes. And then if that doesn't work, I'll reflash it with clean flight. And if that doesn't work, I'll throw a NAS32 in there because I know the NAS32 works with clean flight or with base flight. So there you go. It's um, one nice thing is underneath here, probably won't be able to see it because it's uh, hidden deep within the bowels, way down in there where my finger is, you can just catch a glimpse of it. There is a UBEC in there, voltage regulator, which provides the five volts to run your flight controller because these are opto ESCs, they don't have BECs in them. So this little onboard voltage regulator there provides the voltage to run the flight controller, which is great. That means that uh, you can run obviously from three cells through to six cells on here. It'll be interesting to see if the smoke stays in when we put a six cell pack on it. Maybe we'll try that. We'll do some torture testing. And speaking of torture testing, what about the materials? Well, I've checked them out and it looks like carbon, doesn't it? But it's carbon glass composite. There's a lot of people using carbon glass composite now. I mean, the Walkera runner used it. This uses it. The difference is these are quite thick plates. I mean, these are, you know, what is that? One, it's over a millimeter, I think. I don't have my calipers. Oh, yes, I do. Hang on a minute. Please hold while I grab my calipers. And you'll notice that I'm old school. I've got a dial caliper, none of this digital crap. Nothing but the best here. Um, let me measure that and see what the thickness is. It is 1.6 millimeter. 1.6 millimeter top plate. I think that plate's probably going to be the same. Let's try that out. And that measures a bit smaller, but that might be just position of my. We'll measure it down. Trying to get into it. Try and measure it in here. Now it's actually a bit thinner. It comes out at 1.5. Uh, we've got a power distribution board here, which is going to be fiberglass. That should be 1.6 or maybe even two on here. Actually, what is it? Um, no, it's one point. It's the same thickness as the carbon. Oh, I'm right out of shot. Sorry about that. So yeah, these two boards here, sandwich fiberglass on the top, carbon fiberglass sandwich um, composite on the bottom. The arms again, carbon and fiberglass, and they are around about. If I can get my calipers on here, they are around about four millimeters. So that's plenty thick. Plenty thick for the arms. There you go. Um, having said that though, I'm not 100% happy with the arms, and I'll show you why. Right now, here's an arm, as you can see, motors there, it's upside down. They've got a slot milled in here, why? Why do they have a slot there? What on earth is that slot going to do? Excuse me, I haven't got autofocus on because this is not macro and it's really hard to focus. So, what is that slot going to do except weaken the arm? It's going to do nothing! And how much material have you saved by milling that out? Nothing! Move further up the arm, another strangely positioned slot, or I'm trying to do three things with two hands here. I'll just focus on that for a moment. Another strangely made slot here. Why? I mean, what is, what is the purpose of that? It doesn't, there's nothing mounts there. Um, there's no reason to have that there. But look, it introduces stress rises because all the stress has to run through these narrow gaps either side of this milled area here. Some more slots here. These aren't used either. Why are they there? And then more slots here. So it looks to me a little bit as if the arm is engineered to break. And there may be a reason for that. That's not necessarily a bad thing because if you look at it, if you break an arm, it's a relatively simple replacement compared to having to replace the whole base plate. If this arm breaks off here, instead of ripping this bit out here, then it's just three bolts, a little bit of wiring and you're done. However, if you break this across here, you've got to undo all the arms, separate out the thing, you probably break the PDB as well. So maybe they engineered this to protect the base plate from damage. We'll find out because I'm going to hammer this thing very hard and we'll see whether you break an arm. But again, that's another thing. As I mentioned, um, you do break arms on these things. All mini quads are susceptible to arm breaking. I mean, some of the really good ones don't. I mean, I've never ever broken an arm on the MXP230. I've never broken an arm on the blackout, broken ZMR250 arms, but we'll see whether the new version fixes that. But um, so maybe they should throw in a spare arm. I mean, what does it cost? They're $8 a pair, so four bucks. An extra four bucks on a $300 product is nothing. But what it means is there's nothing worse than buying something like this. Setting it all up, going out to have a fly, and you have a bit of a whoopsie on the first flight and you break a prop, and 
they only provided one set of props so you're grounded until you get some spares or you go out there, you have a whoopsie, you break an arm. And the same thing, you're grounded until you go back online, order another arm, wait two weeks for it to arrive, and then retrofit it out. It makes such a nice purchase experience. It, it, when you provide the little things like a spare arm, some spare props, that turns a good product into a great product. And people really want to buy great products. So RC Timer, why not just have a little, you know, they call it a crash kit or whatever, throw it in so that people don't have to worry about, oh, should I order some arms or not? You know, because invariably, you know, they may not want to. And as I say, this is about a $300 product ready to well, uh, plug and fly. Add your receiver, you know, just bolt a few bits on and you're good to go, even the FPV gears included, except for the video glasses or screen. So I think I've covered most of the bases here. And as I say, the construction seems really good. The cutting of the composite parts is very nice. And every, all the soldering looks good, so yep, I'd say from what I've seen so far, it's a pretty nice product. But obviously, part two will tell whether it's a nice product or a great product. So stay tuned for part two. That'll be coming up probably next week in the uh, stream of videos coming out of RC Model Reviews. Now, if you've got any questions, any comments, any suggestions, whack them in the description of this video. I will do my best to address them. And in the meantime, thank you for watching, and I will get on with constructing or adding the final bits and pieces to this RC Timer Argonaut 370.